The fastest man in the world, Peter Twiss on the right, holds a model of the fastest plane in the world, the Fairy Delta II, and they're both British. Now for the real thing, the Delta II preparing for the flight which will make history. Thirty-four-year-old Peter Twist gets ready to take her up. An ex-naval pilot with a DSC and bar, he has probably flown more high-performance aircraft than any other Englishman. And the Fairy Delta II is certainly one of the strangest looking of them all. Pilots and ground crew call her the droop snoot, because to give the pilot a clear view during landing and taxiing, her swordfish nose can be tilted downwards. Everything is ready and the Delta takes off. To record the Delta's speed to an accuracy of one thousandth of a mile an hour, highly complex photographic equipment is necessary. As she streaks across the sky, we get some impression of her tremendous speed when we realize that that vapor trail is seven and a quarter miles up. Now the return trip over the measured course. Watch this and remember it. It's the first time man has flown over a thousand miles an hour in level flight. The calculations and the checking of reports begin. As Peter Twist brings the Delta in, he knows the records in the bag. The margin was too big for doubt. And what a margin. His average speed was 1,132 miles an hour, beating the American-held world record by 308 miles an hour. A splendid achievement for British designers, British craftsmen, and a British pilot. And what does Peter himself say? Just routine. in the company put a bit of pressure on the on the ministry to allow the speed record to go ahead. They thought it was good for the company and good for the morale of the, the people involved. To get a proper reading you've got to fly probably for the uh, best part of a hundred miles to, to, to settle down to a steady speed. Normally you're looking at um, 25 to 30,000 feet uh, for the best um, power range and the other thing is we have a, a large number of greenhouse owners around here and if you're much below that you're going to do a lot of damage because it, it was, does produce a substantial um, bang if you like which when you're going along spread, spread along underneath you and we did have an enormous number of complaints and had to pay quite a lot of damage to uh, greenhouse owners. We use the sea as a, the shore or the sea, sea line as a, a, as a good guide to, to which direction we should be flying. Well, we, we set up this, this record course down on the south coast, about 10 miles long. The aim was to accelerate towards the start and then try and keep the speed reasonably constant for the few minutes it takes to get to the finish and then turn around and, and do the same again in the opposite direction. The average was the actual speed which you were going to use as the record speed. Yeah. Well, we did so many, so many runs we were able to take a, a, a good average. A lot of press obviously we wanted a first hand story. So you had to see representatives for quite a number of newspapers and, and uh, there were uh, radio and television um, shots of the aircraft and um, I talking into explaining what was happening. Um, it seemed to go on forever. You couldn't get away from it. It was wh wherever you went. Um, obviously the telephones one thing, but then they start calling at your home and uh, all hours of the day and night it, it became a bit wearing. I think there, uh, there was a bit, several parties, it was the biggest one obviously was at the end, but there were, a lot of the people enjoyed themselves. <laughs>